So I'm going to unmute because I forgot that step. We're going to start following whenever we're live. So this does not apply when we're off the air, but whenever we are live, we're following state testing rules where your phones need to be zipped up into your backpacks only when we're on the air. So you can leave your earbuds in. I need one out as per usual live rules so that I know you can hear me. Um, but anytime I'm on the air, anytime I'm instructing, your phones need to be zipped up into your backpacks. They do not have to stay there the entire period, just so long as the live on air sign is on, your phones need to be zipped up into your, into your bag. So practice it right now by putting them a little bit um, Passing your ear here. All right, so you'll have to sign out of that one. Because it's good. Okay, so whenever we're on the air, your phone's going to be zipped up. Please, because I'm not going to lecture the entire time. It is something I keep mentioning. Anyway, you guys, for the time being that we're on the air, I need you guys focused. I need you guys aware of what's happening. And with the phones uh, in such an accessible way, it keeps getting in the way of the stuff that we need to get done. You can use them when they're off the air. That is your time to use however you feel best. If that's uh, you would rather be on your phone than use the work time provided, that is your choice. Remember, there are consequences with choices. So just keep in mind when it's off the air, it's your time. I'll leave it at that. I am emailing parents to let them know of this change. And if it's something that you aren't able to handle, hi, good morning. You're not able to handle being live on the air, uh, then we can talk more. But it's just something that I'm noticing, especially towards this end of the school year, where it's really easy to um, kind of relax. You can see silver on the horizon. It's nice and sunny. Very easy to not do the things that we need to get done. So this is my solution. We're going to give it a shot. And I appreciate you guys participating. So we're live. Your phone should stay zipped up for the duration until we are off the air. Um, yeah, it's a quick one today. Your first deadline is tonight to change gears. Your uh, anything, oh, unit six was from graphic design. But anything that we have done up until about today or right before we went to break will not be accepted after midnight tonight. So that was the discussion boards at the beginning of the uh, semester. Your budgeting spreadsheets, different parts of the resume, cover letter process, that will no longer be accepted after midnight tonight, April 15th. So. If you have that halfway done or you haven't started, you should definitely focus on getting that in because done is better than perfect. 50%, you know, 50%, 40%, low percentages on assignments doesn't look great, doesn't feel great, feels way better than a zero though, okay? Sometimes in adult life, you do what you can. Even if it's not finished, there are people who can help you out, but if it hasn't even been started or it's not even turned in, that's a roadblock that is really, really hard to move past. So I'm going to emphasize done is better than perfect. I am a very understanding grader, OK? I know how busy you guys are. I know how stressful things are. But you still need to get things turned in. Just so all of our paperwork looks nice, done is better than perfect, OK? You will still get a decent amount of points, even if it's not fully complete, because I care more that you guys are trusting the process of my things than the actual product, OK? That's more graphic design sort of talking. but. Emphasizing done is better than perfect. This is a lesson that is really hard for me to unlearn as a perfectionist in my adult life. I'm sure you guys can relate to that. Um, you know, beats a zero. And that's all you guys need to be aware of. You have until midnight tonight to finish up anything that's been assigned um, up until the Friday before break, the 5th. If you need any help with that today, I'm happy to do that. But you got to get it in before, uh, before the assignments close tonight at midnight. Couple quick things. We're starting our interviews over the next two weeks, um, or the next two weeks of class periods. Whoops, it's all good. So there's a couple things that you uh, you need to know, because I know we're going to start that tomorrow. I'm not sure who it is, but I will check in with you today. We're going to do um, start by talking about your attire. I'm not asking you guys to come in full suits, but it is important to know that when you show up to an interview, your attire communicates a lot about what you're trying to say. Um, even without thinking about it. So if we go to your thread for the day, you can see your seating chart is also in the replies, in theory. There's two really key um, or consistent different types of attire or 
dress code that you've heard of um, kind of in the working world. And those two categories are either going to be business casual or professional. There's regular casual, which is what I'm typically wearing. It's just t-shirts, sweatshirts, um, jeans, more in the realm of comfortable clothes. Comfort is great, but when you're trying to communicate a level of um, maturity, a level of professionalism, a level of you should listen to me, the way that you dress is really uh, the first thing that's going to communicate that. So this is just specifically for your interviews. If we look at the business casual link. This is a good one because it has examples. So whenever someone is talking about, hey, the dress code is business casual or whatever, it's just one step up above casual. Things like polos, collared shirts, uh, longer skirts, um, ties aren't really business casual, um, slacks, nice looking shoes, right? Just things that are what you would wear to like a Sunday best, if we're kind of using the some of the more antiquated terms, right? There's a whole bunch of different options here if you're focusing on one of these specific uh, industries. I know a lot of you are interested in service industry positions. There's a couple finances, a couple entertainment, few education or a few future educators in here. Lots of different options here that can go about. Um, oh, that just explains what it is. Never mind. What I also like is what you should not wear. This is equally important because sometimes what I find in adult life is knowing where to start can be kind of challenging. But if you look at the flip side, you kind of invert that and think about what should I not wear. That also is going to help you take steps toward the direction that you're uh, you're trying to achieve. Um, what not to do is just as important a lesson as what to do. So this is going to be the definite place to start. Um, most of you are going to have business casual attire. It is something that you're graded on in your interviews. So you want to look nicer. You don't have to wear it the entire day. You can change before class and change after. I don't mind. But it is something to be um, careful of and something you definitely want to consider in the interview direction of skills. Then there's professional. This is a more detailed guide on business attire, starting with casual and working your way up through the different levels of dress. There's one in between casual and business called smart, where you're just kind of, it's basically just jeans and a nicer shirt or a nicer blouse or um, and, uh, more effort on the shoes, right? Then we get into business professional all the way up to formal. This is more in your, uh, your legal department, your politician, diplomacy, things where you really wanna be taken seriously. That is the um, business formal level of uh level of dressing business professional as well but most of the jobs that i've worked have been business casual or um business professional so it's good to just kind of get aware of what sort of things you want to wear to an interview as well as as you get into your adult life what sort of clothes to look out for that can be used as work clothes so another thing that is really important in your interviews tomorrow are greetings and quote-unquote manners there's not really a better term that i couldn't think of um, but these are like interview kind of best practices for just things to uh, keep in mind about the conversation, right? I noticed in the senior interviews that I conducted, since you guys already uh, know that you knew who the teachers were that you were going to, a lot of you did not introduce yourself. That is a key, critical, crucial part of any interview is shaking hands with the interviewer and introducing yourself so that you know you know, it sets the tone for the professional level of the interview. Another thing that you are going to be graded in in your one-on-one -on -one interviews starting uh, for you guys will be Wednesday. You always shake hands and you always introduce yourself. And then again, this seems kind of like a, like a duh, both of these. You want to thank them on the way out. In the same way that interviews and email and some of the ways that we conduct business as a society, um, there's different rules as compared to just regular day-to-day -day interactions. So these two things are key. Even if you have a an interview that's kind of eh, just in the future, maybe you weren't super confident about it. Sorry, I have the hiccups, excuse me. If you start strong and end strong, that's still gonna look better than if someone uh, who forgot these steps or neglected them entirely, right? It's just a lot of the interview is making yourself look good. And these are two of the same ways, or two more ways that you can do that um, inside of your inside of your interview practices with me 
uh, coming up these two next two weeks. When you are not interviewing, because I'm going to be busy, obviously, outside interviewing different people for their uh, desired positions, I will be having you guys work on a research project that regards colleges, about um, acceptance rate, about uh, cost of tuition, cost of living. It's pretty comprehensive because you'll have some time to do it. You'll have about two weeks to finish it up, different aspects of it. Um, I'll go into more detail on that tomorrow. But when you're not interviewing, that's what you should be working on. And that is another project that we're going to be focused on for the next uh, couple days. So that's where we're at for now. Um, I'll go over, I'll catch up with the people who I'm interviewing on Wednesday. Make sure you guys are ready uh, and have a plan. But that's basically all I've got for us today as we get back into the um, get back into the swing of school. And I appreciate you guys keeping your phones away. We'll do this every time we go live. Um, just so that we can, I can have your attention when I need it. Cool. Thank you guys for listening. I'm going to close this up real quick, and then uh, I can help you with whatever you need. The time, the uh, remaining time will be yours. Thank you, guys.